Welcome to the Jack Weston MCAT Podcast with your host, Phil Hawkins. And Asai Calderon Muñiz. Now, this is the podcast we know you have all been waiting for. It has been so long since we talked about this topic. And Phil, you know, it's probably my favorite topic on the MCAT. (laughs) I know. I feel like it's a little my fault. Like I've been pulling us into the science realm so hard. Um, (laughs) But we love it. We love we need a balance of science Mm -hmm. and the one section everyone knows that they want to hear about. And that's cars. And the reason that we decided to do a podcast on cars is because it's, and I think we've mentioned this before, it's the one section of the exam that you there's no content to fall back on, right? And so you need to know how you're going to approach this section in order to succeed on this section. And we're going to talk a little bit about why this section is important, why it can feel a little tough and nerve wracking, and how we can simplify it. Um, And there's just so much to to unpack here. For those of you that are very early on in your studying, remember that the car section, the critical analysis reasoning section, nine passages, um, and you get the full 90 minutes, which means you're spending about 10 minutes a passage. So this can be, you know, kind of daunting, but you're just getting uh, text that you're going to be reading through and answering questions about. But yes, I'm super, super excited for the car section. I'm like trying to hold it in and maintain my composure, but I don't know how long that's going to (laughs) last. It's it's so weird, that section of the test. Um, I always like to say that like the MCAT is kind of like the biathlon in the Olympics. Like in the biathlon, it's like cross-country skiing and shooting guns. And like, (laughs) what do those have to do with each other? nothing but somehow they get combined into one sporting event um it's kind of the same thing for the mcat you have all the sciences Mm -hmm. stuff and then you have cars and it's all smashed together into the mcat um but i agree like there's i think one of the reasons that we don't talk about it as much is cars is very largely skill based now that doesn't mean you can't get better like you can always get better at skills like if i wanted to get good at juggling or solving a rubik's cube or riding a bicycle like i could do that but um, skills are are a little bit hard to to like. It's different than knowledge, right? Knowledge is something that is really good to get across in a podcast, right? Like how we can I can tell you a fact, and now you have this fact. Like you have increased your knowledge. Skills are a little bit different, and like it's just honestly, it's just like a completely different uh, test. It's like a completely different thing, kind of overall, and requires kind of a different perspective and a different way of approaching it. Um, I know a lot of students like just kind of wonder like, is cars important, right? I mean, there's some there's some obvious stuff of like obviously this is part of the MCAT. Obviously, this is like your MCAT will help you get into med school. Um, I will say that there are some schools that put even more emphasis on cars than the sciences. Um, and and like in Canada, like cars is incredibly important. If you if any of you guys are Canadian applicants or wanting to go to a Canadian medical school, um, cars is something that is weighted kind of heavy um, in that that area. And so I think it, it it absolutely does matter, but not just for like getting into med school, but I think that the skills in cars are pretty important for a physician. And so I think that there's some relevancy to this. Um, I know that we have Like we talk a lot about med school because we've both been to med school slash are in med school. And um, one of the things that's hard about med school is just the volume of content. And that is absolutely a thing that, um, at least for me, like that was the biggest challenge of med school is just the volume of stuff that I needed to get through. And so if, if medical schools want to figure out who is going to do well in medical school, then like they need to know who can deal with the volume of content. That's what the sciences are for. But just knowing a bunch of facts doesn't make somebody a great physician. Otherwise, like a computer would be the best physician because computers know more facts than I do. Um, Dr. Google, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Like there's there's a problem. There's a reason like that, that we don't have just like purely computer-based medicine, right? Because there's some some components in this that require something beyond just facts. Um, and I think that's where cars comes in this, this ability to kind of like try to get some understanding. Yeah, absolutely. And the same way that amino acids are, you know, the highest yield science topic cars is actually the highest yield 
topic, right? It's, it's higher yield than any single science topic. And that's because you get 53 questions on it, right? So if you don't pay attention to cars, you have the potential to tank your entire MCAT score. And so it's really important to give it the time and the space that it needs and it deserves. And th that time that you're going to allocate to it depends on the student, right? Because some students come in and it's a little easier for them. Others come in, it's starting from scratch. But at the end of the day, I think it's helpful to remember that cars is essentially our first set of patients. And I didn't really get this until I got to med school and was seeing, was seeing patients on a, on a regular basis. Because with cars, you're having a conversation with the author, right? But that conversation is leaning towards listening, not speaking. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when we are having conversations with, with people, are we listen to respond, right? And not listen to understand. And with our patients, we have to listen, not just to respond, but to understand. And so it's that conversation, that back and forth right? That is so important for cars. The fourth comes in right back, meaning we're listening. The fourth comes into once you've identified what's important, then you're applying. And so it's the same way with our patients where once we know what matters to them and we get the information that we need for what matters to us, we can go and act on it. And so at the end of the day, this matters because yes, MCAT, Right. You, you guys know that we we love preparing you for the MCAT. That's our primary goal. We also have a very major goal of making sure that you are ultimately also prepared and have an idea of med school and then afterwards as as a physician. So this is a skill that you're going to take with you throughout medical school and your your years as a physician. Something else that I didn't come to realize until my primary clinical year was that it also helps with the exams that you take at a national level in in medical school and i think I've, I've told some students about this but when i was taking you know as i was taking the the national exams i started realizing because i i'm always doing cars i, I joked about it last week but cars is in my pores at this point um the mcats in my pores um i i realized that if i thought about the questions differently i could get more right and what i do now is i actually approach some of those questions the way i approach cars passages and questions because the questions are essentially a mini paragraph um mm -hmm. and so i may not have all of the content down but i can get more points by understanding the test writers and so that's part of where what we do here comes into play we're always trying to get you to understand the test writers right uh, yeah in both the sciences and cars yeah and that's like i, th I think you're you're right like this there's a lot of overlap between cars and patients. I think a lot of students like see the car section and say like, Oh, like, why do I need a reading test? Like, that's not something, mm -hmm. I mean, you are going to get those sorts of things in medical school, but like a lot of students say like, Oh, that's not an important part of being a physician, but it's really about just trying to understand what's going on when you are presented information imperfectly. I really wish that every time I met a patient, everyone was had had the same standards and everyone was exactly the same straightforward and all the tests were clear and there were no like you know like errors anywhere in like the interview process or the history or the physical or anything like that but you need to be able to make assumptions you need to be able to figure out things i'm not saying like assumptions are good but you need to be able to like if you have a patient who comes in and you've had this patient around before and he had a kidney stone and this patient said like was really downplaying the pain of this. And this patient was like, oh, it's no big deal. Like, oh, you know, I'll be OK. And like that sort of stuff. And now they come in and they say, oh, my knees like sore. Like I know in the back of my head, like this this patient like does not ex talk about pain and does not ex like explain pain, tries to downplay pain. And so if, if he is taking time out of his day to come to the doctor to say his knee's a little sore, that's like, I need to pay more attention to this, right? Like, this is not just somebody who's, you know, like, you know, banged their knee. Like, maybe there's something more serious going on here. And you need to use this sort of subtext to kind of like understand and interpret. And that's how the MCAT is with the car section, right? Like, they don't say like in the first paragraph, um, like, I don't know. Uh, France makes a bunch of cheese. And then one of the questions is, what does France make a bunch of? Right. <laughs> like that test would be really easy if that mm -hmm. was the that was the setup. Like they're asking you to like make connections within the passage and like find the subtext 
and understand what the author means, right? Like how the author feels about things. You're trying to understand what's going on kind of like behind the words. And that's very often what you have to do as a physician. Um, I've talked about this like in lots of examples, but like if you have a a patient who feels guilty, um, th- this happens a lot in cancer where a patient will have cancer and they will feel like they're a burden to everyone, right? And so they like like if you're like walk up to your friends, like let's say you're in high school um, and you got diagnosed with cancer and every time you walk up to your friends, they all get sad because they're reminded that you have cancer, right? Like that sort of thing makes you start to feel bad, makes you start to feel like I'm a burden to everyone in the world. Like maybe it would be better if I just wasn't around or things like, like those, those thoughts like are, are really important medically. Like you need to be paying attention to and seeing these things like signs of depression or, or things like that. I hate to get too heavy too quickly, but um, you need to kind of understand what's going on in a patient's mind. There are times when patients need like a ride to chemotherapy because they're feeling sick from all the chemo and they're so tired and they feel bad and they're like, they don't feel like they can get on the bus or use public transit. And so they kind of need a ride, but they don't want to ask for a ride to, to other people. And so as a physician, you need to be able to kind of like recognize and help put uh, patients in the right frame of mind. Like, listen, nobody's going to think you're a burden like by by like having cancer and you need to like if you ask for help that honestly will make other people feel like they can do something to help this scenario right your friends might be relieved if you ask them for a ride right or if you ask them to like help out with something right they'll feel like oh i can now help in this scenario where somebody i love is going through a hard hard thing and so understanding like patients' mindsets are, is really big. I really can't overemphasize this. And I think that that's what the CARS section is testing. Like how well can you understand someone else, right? Because it's like being a doctor isn't just about knowing all the facts. It's also about understanding what's going on in someone else's head and understanding what people are going through. And that like empathy side of things, which is so critical to medicine, but I feel like really doesn't get the the emphasis sometimes that it it needs to get emphasized. But I think I actually really like that the AMC like has the car section the way that it is with like, I know a lot of times like this is a passage about Picasso or a passage about like a certain type of architectural feature called a pilaster or something like that. And like, yeah, that information doesn't really matter for you as a physician. What does matter is can you understand how the author feels about pilasters? Understand how the author feels about Picasso? Can you understand kind of like what's going on behind that? Um, I'm getting super animated because it's just so like it's it's really, really important. It is. And I, I want to be clear because when we talk about assumptions here, like we we often say do not make assumptions in the car section. Yeah. Um, I think what what you said about making the connections yeah. is really what we want you guys to to capture, right? Because the author will connect different ideas the same way patients will in their own way connect different ideas. Um, and so you don't want to go in that patient that, that you were talking about that has pain. You don't want to assume that because they're coming in for pain, um, which you know you have to be more cautious of now because they have that history of, of kind of downplaying pain. You don't want to automatically assume that like their leg is broken, right? That's too far. But you can understand by connecting their prior experience or their prior interactions with you here, um, yeah, this this is something to, to worry about, right? And I agree with you so much that, you know, you, you need to understand how the author feels. You need to ha- understand how the author thinks the same way that you need to understand how your patients think. Because we were talking about this, you know, not too long ago with, with the idea of like emotions, um, right? So our emotions can, can fluctuate, but understanding how someone thinks, that's, that's a little more, more on the fundamental level, right? And so at the end of, at the end of the day, CARS is really about that understanding and having that conversation with the author, even if it can be a little scary at times. Yeah. And I think that this can make, like, if I ever have a student come to me and say, hey, I'm struggling really bad with one section of the test, getting like a 124 in one section and 128s and 129s in every other section, right? It's always CARS. And that's because, like, the skills that help you with the sciences 
um, like being able to memorize vast amounts of information, being able to do data interpretation. That kind of helps you in all the science sections. Um, but bringing in outside knowledge hurts you in cars, right? It doesn't help you. It hurts you. And so you have to, um, so you have to kind of like all these things that make you successful in three quarters of the test, you have to chuck them out the window and do something completely opposite for, for cars. And that, that makes it scary. And that's, that's, that makes it just kind of tricky overall because students have to relearn an approach, right? It isn't just that, oh, it's a different sort of topic, but the way that you tackle it is different. It's a different format, right? It's a different way of kind of like thinking about the test on paper cars, sounds like the easiest portion of the exam, right? Like we give you a passage and some questions and all the answers are in the passage, right? It's an open note test. Like that feels like the easiest thing. <laughs> but the like the whole point of the MCAT is to try to separate people, right? Like the exam exists yep. to like figure out who's going to do the best in med school, who's going to be the best physician and who's going to be the worst. And like there are skills you can develop that will make you a better physician. And a lot of those skills will translate to the MCAT. I, I do want to just take a moment and say, like, if you're getting a bad MCAT score, that doesn't mean you'll be a bad physician. But it might mean that you need to work on some skills, like to kind of like improve and like that sort of thing. And so like, just like, you know, I think I think that everyone can do well on the MCAT. But like, it takes some training, right? Like, I think probably everyone can juggle but like if I, if, but it takes some training and some people are going to take to it really easy. Some people, it's going to be a little bit harder to take to it. Like, you know, just because of like, some people are just like really gifted with coordination um, and like people who are just kind of all over that. And so some people are going to pick up juggling faster than ours. I think everyone can pick it up, but like it, it just may take more work for some people than others. So I don't want students to like, when I say like, you know, the higher scores means you're going to be a better physician. I don't want students to like say that like, oh, if I'm getting a bad score, that means I won't be a good physician or won't be a good medical student. But the reason I bring this up is because I wanted to just kind of emphasize that the whole point of the MCAT is to separate people. And so while the test in theory sounds like a really easy thing where they give you the passage and then the questions about the passage, they have to get really tricky. They have to kind of like set up the passages and and the questions in a certain way. They got to make the wrong answers really tempting and they got to make the right answers kind of like you kind of don't want to pick them. Yeah, like funky and like, ah, this doesn't really feel right. Um, and and that's, that's something that is done by design. But once again, it's a skill and it takes some time and practice to kind of work on. Oh, a hundred percent. Right. I think, I think, but you hit the nail on, on the head. I had to think about how that is, is said, yeah. Um, but yeah, because you can have, and, and to be very frank, you can have someone with a perfect MCAT score who may not be the kindest physician. Yeah. Right. And you can have someone with a lower MCAT score, but they have, they can be a kind physician. They can be a good physician. They're going to put in more work. What, what we're saying is your starting point is, it compared to your ending point is a measure of maybe what med school may be like, right? In terms of that difficulty. Because like you were saying, Phil, there's there's just a really big volume that you have to learn in medical school. And like you said, that's where some of that science section of the MCAT comes into play. Because can you, right, take the this insane amount of information that we've thrown at you and learn that and learn it and start making connections. And then CAR is going to take that a step even further, right? Like, how are you making those connections? How far are you going with, with those connections and things like that? Um, and I think also another thing that makes CAR's nerve wracking is most people have done, you know, an English class, a writing class, et cetera, in undergrad, but the way those classes tend to be format, I have I have yet to meet one where it's a multiple choice test, <laughs> but if it's a multiple choice test by some miracle, yes, it's going to have some questions about, about, you know, the author's perspective and whatnot, but that even then it would probably have a writing section, right? Normally you're writing papers about whatever you just read. And so you're incorporating your own ideas into undergrad writing and, you know, and literature classes. Uh, I never, and I, I was a um, romance language literature major and I never just had to regurgitate what the author said. It was always our analysis of it. And so the MCAT in this case, now you're not allowed to have an opinion. You can't, you're, 
if you see me on the street, if you see Phil on the street and you have an opinion about a car's passage that you're really passionate about, sure, right? Yeah. <laughs> I personally would love to hear it. But when you sit down for the MCAT, your opinions don't matter. They need to go out the door. And so that can be really scary as well because now you're constrained. You don't have uh, content to fall back on. You're not allowed to have an opinion. You're, listen you're listening to these authors and they all have different ways of talking, right, of writing. Um, some of the questions feel insanely tricky and it's in a time constraint. And so all of this can lead to a very terrifying section that students don't want to work on, especially yeah. when they're thrown topics that they don't recognize, right? Because what are the... Listen, I knew Picasso existed before reading the passages and before mm -hmm. I started studying for the MCAT. Did I know anything about Picasso? No, <laughs> right? Yeah. But there are actually quite a few Picasso passages. Um, but I don't need to be an expert on Picasso. Instead, I get to enjoy learning about Picasso or learning about some business model or learning about, you know, how much it costs to teach teachers. And these are all things that I never would have known if I hadn't taken the MCAT right? And done the cars section or done cars passages. And so all of these things, like you said, Phil, everyone can do well. Everyone can learn the skills. It may just take people different amounts of time to learn the skills. And the degree that we are all ultimately comfortable with taking this car section in this time frame is also going to be variable. And that's okay. But that kind of discomfort does not mean that you cannot do well. It's a matter of working on the skills and getting to a point where you can overcome that discomfort and that kind of immediate need to pull back and that freezing and procrastination response from the fear associated with, with the car section. This, like, you you hit onto a lot of ideas there that just kind of like light bulbs were going off in my head of like, you're right. Like English class as an undergrad, you're putting your own information into this. Mm -hmm. On the MCAT, all of a sudden, you need to not do that. You need to not add your stuff. And that, that makes it hard because you've been trained to do this differently than how they're testing it. They're testing you on a skill that you have not been trained on, that you have not seen. You have not practiced in undergrad. You have not kind of gone through this. Um, I hate to tie everything to the sciences, but I actually <laughs> like talk about that often with data interpretation. Like on the MCAT, like I personally, like I had a biology and a chemistry degree, right? Um, kind of like going through this. I think I read like one or two journal articles total in undergrad. Um, and even then, I don't think I was like seriously graded on them or anything. I'm just like, I'll just read the abstract and I'm done, right? I'm, I'm good to go. And that's like, that's something that is a little bit trickier because it's all over on the MCAT. There's so much data interpretation and a lot of students really struggle with it because they haven't done it before and they haven't seen it before. And it's honestly, it's a little bit unfair that you go through undergrad and then you take the MCAT and all of a sudden you're tested on stuff that you have never been asked to develop those skills, like up until this point, like the data interpretation stuff, dealing with cars, like interpreting, just listening. Don't and put your own thing. And like, once you understand how to do these things, it's not nearly as bad, but it takes some training and some, some skills into this. Now, I know I said it's kind of unfair, but there's a reason these things are like this, right? And in the, in the case of data interpretation, you have to interpret data as a physician. You are mm -hmm. going to need to research things. Um, all throughout COVID, I would like have regular meetings with my my friends from med school. We'd kind of like get together on Zoom calls and and things like that to just kind of hang out and be in touch with each other's lives and and you know just kind of like communicate and be friends and go through this. And um, it was it was really common for us to to like at some point in the conversation, like, hey, did you read this research article about this new research <laughs> coming out of Mayo? Like, or did you read that article that came out of Germany? Um, about like what's going on with this thing. And like, like these, these are physicians. These are people who have graduated med school, right? They, they're, they're through this, but they are still like looking at information, still researching information. They still need to know when a study was done well and when a study was done poorly, because that should influence when you are prescribing medications. You need to understand like, oh, these patients in this study were all had these sorts of things. But like, notice that in the results, there was some like 
some side effects with like respiratory problems. And so I have this patient who's got the same disease, but he's got like COPD. I probably don't want to give this medication to this patient because they have, like, I don't want to make their respiratory problems worse. And so maybe I need to go with a different medication, which might not be quite as effective, but it has less severe side effects in terms of respiratory stuff. And like, you need to be able to kind of like interpret this data as a physician in med school, they don't have time to teach you to do a bunch of data interpretation. I know some of you guys are like, well, they should make time and they should add classes. Like, no, no. Like when you get to that point, you will be very glad that like no more classes, no more information. <laughs> and so somewhere in this journey, you have to go from college to being a physician. At some point, you need to learn this. They can't teach it to you in med school. So you have to learn it before that. And because the AAMC can't control what's going on at the university level, what they do is they add a bunch of data interpretation onto the MCAT. So students automatically before they get into med school have been trained on doing data interpretation. It's kind of the same thing for cars with this ability to understand other people and understand patients. Like that's a built-in thing that you did not have to do a pure listening course anywhere in an <laughs> undergrad. You need that to develop those skills to be a good physician. They can't teach you that in med school. So we're throwing it on the MCAT. And it's a little bit unfair, but that's just the way that the system has like tried to figure out how to make this work. And so it takes time to practice these things, but it is something you can totally develop. But just kind of taking a moment, try to understand why the system works this way from a meta view is like, I, I don't want students to say like, I'm I'm struggling with the data interpre uh, interpretation or I'm struggling with cars. And so that means I'm a bad student. No, it's just like, it's, we need to test you on this. We need you to be good at this. Like, we're going to just throw this on this test and leave it up to you to figure out how to do these things, which is, as I said, a little bit unfair, but kind of makes sense. Like, I want my physicians able to interpret data. I want my physicians to be able to understand what I'm saying, even if I'm not great at communicating. If I'm talking to a child or talking to someone with developmental disabilities or talking to you know, like different, you know, somebody who's in a lot of pain, I need to be able to, and like having trouble kind of expressing themselves, you need to be able to understand these people. And that is, is just a critical thing. And you have to develop those. Yeah. And there's so much, uh, there's so much there. Um, I know. <laughs> this is, this is the problem when we talk, Phil, we just like, go off of each other. And like, there we, we have so many other ideas. Um, yeah, so with with this idea of data interpretation, right, you do need to be able to come into medical school with with some degree of understanding, how can I interpret the information I'm presented. And then this idea of, okay, so is a study good in the sense that is it does it have good validity right internal and external validity things that we need to remember for the MCAT. Um, P values, okay, right, exactly. Yeah. And so and, and I will say I've had two courses that I've been, that have at times felt rushed that a small portion of that course is dedicated to just like looking at articles and saying, is this a good study? What is not so good? What, but, but that came later, right? And one of those after we were in clinic for a year, you know? And so it's, it's tough because you're like, okay, well, it would have been nice to have this fully earlier, but mm -hmm. you see a lot of the physicians. I like that you pointed that out. A lot of the physicians that I worked with were still looking things up. I don't think, actually, I don't think there was a single one that wasn't looking things up. I think they, I think they looked things up to, to differing degrees, um, but they wanted to know what was current. Right. And so I think that's incredibly, incredibly important to keep in mind because this, this journey does not end at the MCAT. And I know a lot of test prep companies, they care about your MCAT score and that's kind of it. Right. But the same way that the a lot of med schools are moving towards a more holistic approach of understanding you as an applicant, you, it's it's our responsibility to make sure that we think of the MCAT in a more holistic way and not just, OK, if I do this, then I'm bad. If I don't do this, then I'm good. Like, it, it's not that binary. Yeah. And so I know that we've talked a lot. A, like very meta, meta yeah. about this, like big picture. But I think one of the other problems, like to, to get like more specific, that like problems that students have with cars is you'll read a passage and you're just not interested in it, right? It's boring, right? Like I know that I personally 
don't like, I really don't like the economics passages. Like those are the ones I'm like, I don't really, I, I, I want universal truths like physics and chemistry. And that, that's just kind of the way I am. Um, but like anything about like politics, anything about economics, I'm just like, I'm just not super into, right. I'm not super, I'm not as excited to read about that as I am excited to read about this new beetle that was discovered in Indonesia. That's got these <laughs> strange properties, right? Like that's interesting. Um, to me, but that's one of the the challenges is being able to get through a car's passage and still be engaged and still like pulling stuff out of this. Um, and at least for me, as someone who is, I, I don't know if I've talked about this like ever, but um, I was diagnosed with ADHD at, at earlier in my life. And like, this is, this is something like reading a car's passages that my brain is not interested in makes it really hard to focus and pull these things out. Um, and, and so for me, like I need a task and uh, my brain needs to get engaged in this thing. It needs a job to do. Um, I think I've talked about this before, but I know I've talked about it in free trial sessions, but if you were in a scenario where your life like, let's say you had to look at a brick wall, like we have the brick walls behind us, and you had to stare at a brick wall and think only about the brick wall. Don't think about lunch. Don't think about, like, I wonder, like, how my sports team's going to be doing. I wonder what my significant other is doing or, or you know, that that cute person that I'm interested in. I wonder I wonder if I can talk to them. Like, you're, if, if your job is to stare at this brick wall and think only about the brick wall for 10 minutes, and if you think about anything else, you you lose most people are going to lose right in that in that scenario for me i need a task i need a job right i can i can stare at the brick wall and think only at the brick wall if i give myself a job like okay you should count all the the white bricks and then like the slightly darker ones and then the really dark ones and like how many of each one do i have and what's the biggest grouping of the dark red bricks that are touching each other okay there's four there's six Okay. Oh, ooh, there's one, two. The, oh, there's seven. That's kind of a weird shape, and that kind of looks that 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 looks like a horse, and that 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 brick wall, and like <laughs> this looks like, and like giving yourself tasks, giving yourself jobs to stay focused on. So even yeah. if this passage is about economics, that's not interesting to me. But if I have a job, like oh, find how the author feels, find opinion, find arguments, right? Find some con. Like, how does this person's viewpoint differ from that person's viewpoint, right? I don't really care what the viewpoints are about that much. Like, in, in internally, like okay, this person thinks interest is good at higher levels, and this thinks it's be good bad at higher levels, right? Or something like that. Like, I don't really care about that, but these people disagree. And that's interesting to me. That's the thing that I'm hunting for. And so there's like kind of a perfect storm. If you can make it so that your job, the thing that you're hunting for, like, I just need that, right? To just stay engaged in the passage. So if I'm going to be hunting for something, I should be hunting for what's going to get tested <laughs> and like have given myself a job where I'm going through this, just the job in and of itself makes me stay engaged in the passage but also helps me kind of like isolate the sort of things that the questions are going to be about as well. As you were talking about counting brick walls, I was immediately looking at like this, I'm here, this set here. And my thing wouldn't have been counting them. It would have been looking at the patterns of like the little lines within the brick wall. Yeah. Or like ones but, that are kind of two-tone because there's, yeah. there's some in there that are like like gradients and yeah. like counting how many are gradients white to red <laughs> in one direction or white to red in the other one. Which one do I have more of? And, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I, I love what you're saying, right? Like it's, you're not going in reading for the sake of reading. And if you go in reading for the sake of reading, long passages and boring passages will get you. It's that simple. So you can't go in reading for the sake of reading, which is why, you know, we talk so much. We're talking so much here. And, and if you come to the, you know, cars free trial sessions or in the course, um, you'll hear us talk about like how to stay engaged um, because it's so important or like how to find what's important. And that's because it comes back to that, that idea that you need to have a task. And so the question then becomes, we said that this is a conversation, Right. Are there, are there any tips we can give you on how to find that conversation? Yeah. And so this is something that I think 
takes some skills to develop. And it's kind of hard to talk about this in pure podcast form without like having examples to point yeah. to. And so I know you like mentioned the free trial sessions. I think if anybody wants some like really like actionable practical things like going to a free trial session is the best way to do this. Um, but very often you'll see scenarios where the author will kind of rephrase stuff in different ways um, and they'll kind of clarify and repeat. And if they like give something that's got like a whole bunch of evidence and support for it, to be honest, I don't care as much about the evidence and support as I care about the argument itself. Um, but like that, that's a way for me to kind of like structurally find these things as I'm going through, like, especially like repetition, like very often you'll see something kind of mentioned in the first paragraph and then also at the end of the fourth and then the last sentence, like, okay, that's probably the main idea of this passage, kind of like what's going on with this. Um, now, there's always exceptions to these to these rules like there can be like a, a an argument that like isn't repeated a ton um and like there's certain things to look for i really want to encourage people to going to like free trial sessions is probably one of the best ways to do that to actually like see it in action and that's because it's a skill as i mentioned it's not knowledge it's a skill and skills take practice right you can't you can't learn to juggle by reading a book right like now i'm a master juggler like no like mm -hmm. skills require practice mm -hmm. um and that's just a difference between the car section which is skill based and the science section which is mostly knowledge based although there are some yeah. skill with like data interpretation yeah and it's you know you mentioned this a good author repeats and clarifies and it's it's true right because they they're trying to get this point across and i think what students often forget is that these passages were not written for the sake of the mcat itself right they are excerpts if you scroll down to the bottom you will see where the amc took these these passages from right and so you were not the original intended audience and so i think that's something that can be a little bit uncomfortable so what really matters is going through and listening to what the author cares about recognizing it wasn't for you and that can be something that's a little a little uncomfortable at times, but I think it's really important to recognize. And like you said, unfortunately, in the format of a podcast, there's only so much that we can we can chat about um, and kind of work through. And so I think that that is something I want to continue to emphasize. But also, I want to continue to emphasize, even in the lack of content requirement, you can still do well. And I would argue that even because it's purely strategy, it's one of the areas where you will have the most growth as a person in, or in terms of as a student. Um, because now this, this term, this it's learning to take yourself out of it and fully understand. And that's tough. Like you said, that's just not something that we're taught to do. And, and I always have to remind students uh, during, during office hours and just in, in class, like take your science hat off because mm -hmm. in your science classes, you were taught to keep making connections and go further and go further. And what else can you, you know, assume and what else can you imagine? And, you know, what, what study can you imagine for, for this, you know, topic and, and kind of keep going, keep the ball rolling. Whereas mm -hmm. with cars, there requires a lot more control of of your mind um and that mm -hmm. kind of requiring yourself to stay focused and targeted in a way that yes the science portions of the mcat test but that can feel more pronounced in the car section yeah the i always like to imagine that like when i walk into the science sections i have a bunch of tools and yeah. like weapons to fight the mcat like i have a <laughs> bandolier of equations and like all of these <laughs> things right and I, I i have tools and these are things that i could have prepared or prepared beforehand. And that's what all the mm -hmm. studying is for to like learn all this stuff. I know all these things about amino acids and like I, in my mind, that's a sword that I can use to fight the MCAT. Amino um, acids are big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a big sword. Um, to claim <laughs> sword. um, but then like walking into cars, all of a sudden I'm naked, right? Like I have, I have nothing that is going to help me defeat like this, there's no knowledge I have that is helpful, but there is approaches, there's skills, there's, there's things Thinking that you can happens. still develop. And to be honest, you don't, you don't need weapons to fight the car sections. Um, it's like one of the, it's like, a, I don't know, some, I'm, tr I'm trying to come up with an analogy and I got nothing, like some weird <laughs> thing that you're fighting that if you had a weapon, you would lose, right? Like that's, <laughs> 
And that's often a problem for students. I know we talked about like there's a lot of passages that are really long and obscure and and tricky. And students like for me, like well, I don't care about economics. And so like that like is a struggle for me to stay engaged in that one and to stay focused. But I also see stuff on the flip often where there's a passage where a students like, oh, I know all about this. And it's super interesting to me. And like that is th- th- there's scary. there's one. So there's a, uh, as I and I have worked together for a while, but um, we both worked together at a place that had a practice test. And one of the practice tests, then the, the entire car section, there's a lot of like really obscure stuff about like the nature of literary criticism and all of this stuff. And then there's a passage about viral videos and everyone bombed that passage. And it's because like you would see a question like, I know about viral videos, like I don't need what's in the passage. And so those are students who are bringing in tools and baggage that they they should they should have left, right? And so if you are answering questions based on what you think, then you're failing. You're failing with the goal of the car section. Um, and I really want to emphasize that because that was my biggest problem personally. And I know there's a lot of students that have a lot of, like there's a lot of different ways things can go wrong in cars, which is why it's useful to develop all these skills. But like the, for me, my problem is I'm bringing in too much stuff. I'm bringing in things. And that's just the way that I tackled most problems in my life, most tests. Like how do I deal with them? I like bring in outside knowledge to solve it. Um, And so there are some students who will do worse on the passages that they think are easier and that are more interesting and like engaging, like, oh, here's a passage about cat videos. Like, oh, I'm an expert in cat videos, right? Like, I'll be great <laughs> at this one. And then I bomb it because I brought in all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And so that's something that like takes a little bit to kind of like go through and and pay attention to this. But you do like this, like developing skills, like what is the author like re- clarifying and repeating stuff, right? Like what is what does the author care most about, right? There's certain like opinionated language and certain keywords that you want to pay more attention to kind of going through. Um, and I think that there's just, there's, there's a lot to this like developing of skills. Um, and I know that, I know that you you teach this as well as I, and I, I think that this is a really important thing. Like if you want to develop skills, like, I don't care as much about timing at first, right? I was like this analogy, like, if your goal is to be able to decorate a beautiful wedding cake in 10 minutes, right? If the, the cake's in there, you got the icing, and your job is to decorate it beautifully, and you got 10 minutes. If my goal is to be able to do that, and I've got six months to learn this, what I'm not going to do is set a clock and try to do it in 10 minutes every single time, right? Because <laughs> like I'm not actually going to get any better. What I need to do is for the first month, just practice decorating cakes and get good at decorating cakes. And like the more I do it, the faster I will get. And that's, I think, a critical thing is like developing skills. Don't worry about timing at first. Develop Like work on developing the right technique, Um Another analogy that I like to use, I I don't know if you've ever seen Gordon Ramsay chop an onion, but it's kind of magical, right? (laughs) He like takes an onion and a knife and then it just poofs into confetti. Um, But like if you watch how he does that, right, like his knife never is, is always touching the cutting board. It never leaves the cutting board and it's just rocking back and forth on the cutting board. And the knife is also always touching his hand, right? I mean, I'm talking about the hand that his knife, like he's holding the knife with his right hand. The knife is always touching his left hand as he goes through. And he just kind of like feeds it through and kind of like rocks the knife. If I wanted to develop that skill to be able to kind of like, boof, like, you know, get this confetti of onion coming out, I am not going to try to go fast, right? I'm going to try to develop the skill, the technique, and I'm going to go slow and I'm going to go through this and I'm going to get the right form. And then after I've cut, you know, a hundred onions or 150 onions, I'm going to be faster and I'm just going to pick up speed as I go through this. But I think a lot of times students when they're practicing cars feel like I, I, at the end of this, I need to be able to go fast. And so I need to practice going fast, like from the get go. And that is, that is not a good strategy for developing skills, right? Develop the technique first, go slow, and speed yeah. will come as you just get better at it. Oh, 100%. And 
this this was the first time this analogy came came to mind while you were talking. Cars is like making caramel. So in terms of what you're going in with, right? You go in with the ingredients that you are given and it requires patience. And mm-hmm. if you try and jump ahead, I, I think because I tried to make some caramel recently. I was going to say, this, this is something I have no idea how this works. So um, so essentially you, you have to have just the sugar and you're not adding anything else to the sugar. You're letting the sugar melt on its own. And the sugar starts caramelizing, right? Then you cool it and then you're adding um, like butter and the mix goes insane. And then, you know, you're adding uh, a heavy cream and and a pinch of salt. And so if anyone has any ideas on how to make caramel work, please send an email to our podcast email, which is podcast at jackweston.com. Don't send too many. Yeah. (laughs) But I wouldn't mind receiving one of those. So, and I failed very miserably. And that's because I didn't, I lacked the patience to wait before adding the other ingredients. And so with cars, if we lack that patience, we're going to be focused on, okay, I want to get this done. I like want to get this on my apples. Let's, let's hurry up. Right. And that's that timing. And now you've just lost an entire batch of Mm -hmm. potential caramel. Right. And the other thing with this is that, you know, we said for cars, you feel naked going into cars. You don't have anything else, right? You have your hands and you have your eyes and you have your mind. And that's really all you need, right? When you're going through cars. And so you may feel naked because on the outside, you don't have this like protection of of the knowledge, you know, of the content. Mm -hmm. But that's because once you've gotten those strategies down packed, it's all here, right? And so it's, it's something that, takes a lot to get comfortable with. And that's why it's something that, you know, we, we could tell you guys all oh, sign up for the course, right? But that's not going to help. We want you to see what it can look like. And we want you to see, and even in general, just, you know, if you're listening to our podcast, l- find out what it looks like, right? Because we've given you, like, like we talked about, we're giving you high level ideas here. We're giving you general tips, but there's nothing like doing. Mm-hmm. I can tell you all day you know, um, listen to what the author says, right? Repeats, clarifies, et cetera. I can just throw those things at you verbally all day that will not necessarily make you improve, right? It's when you apply and when you have guidance and when you have something in front of you that you can work on, that's when you're going to improve. And that's why for cars, we encourage, you know, that concept. That's why we have, y'all, that's why we have the daily cars passages, right? Mm -hmm. It is not a coincidence (laughs) that we release a cars passage every single day for free for Mm -hmm. everyone to practice on. It's not a coincidence. It's because it really is something that you have to be consistent at and with. Yeah. And that's, you know, going back to that, I feel like first off, I just want to side note, I think we might be hungry because our analogies are like cutting (laughs) onions and cake and caramel (laughs) and things and like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a little hungry. But like that other analogy of like, you know, like you're walking in naked, like if you have to go into a fight and you don't have any weapons, you need skills, right? Mm -hmm. Like boxing classes, karate classes, like Kung Fu, right? Like that sort of stuff will help you in that scenario. So you need to develop these skills. And I know that I keep hammering this, but like, it's really important to understand differences between skills and knowledge. Um, Exactly like you said, you learn, you develop skills by practice, right? Like reading, like I said, reading a a book about how to juggle or like how to golf will not turn you into a juggler, will not turn you into Tiger Woods, right? You have to practice going through this. And as a side note, the other thing that's tricky about this is skills inherently take time And that is, that's different than knowledge, right? Like if you sat down on a Saturday morning and you knew nothing about magnetism, you could study magnetism and then now you are, you know everything about magnetism, right? Like you are the master of magnets. You will never miss an MCAT magnetism question. And so you can do that with just like, you know, a couple of hours of work. There's no way to sit down and master cars in a couple of hours. To be honest, I don't think you could do it in a week or a couple of weeks, really. Like it's something that you need to you need to practice over a longer period of time. And this this leads to some of the problems students have with cars and the way that they're tackling cars is a lot of times students like it feels good to cross something off, to be like, I know magnets, cross it off. Good, (laughs) I'm making progress, right? 
you, like you don't get that same dopamine rush of like I sit down on Saturday morning and I did a cars passage. Like, yeah, I've mastered cars. Nah, like that's not how it works. It's a skill. And so a lot of times as a result, students tend to like neglect cars because it doesn't feel like they're making progress, right? They tend to like want to just kind of like work through all these things. And then all of a sudden a bunch of time has passed, your test's coming up and you haven't worked much on cars. And like cars is the one section you cannot cram because it's not knowledge. So like you always want to kind of like be working on cars throughout the entire timeline of your practice. Mm -hmm. And you want to start at the very beginning, start practicing with the right technique, start practicing with the right skills. Um, and so I do want to reiterate, if anyone hasn't been to a free trial session with Azai, go um, like figure out some of those skills going through there. I mean, that's what the course exists. That's why we put out the passages every day. Also just one little other thing to add to this. Like, imagine that you wanted to, so going back to the skills, right? Like if you wanted to get good at basketball and you went to basketball practice one day and you came back, you don't come back feeling I'm better at basketball, right? Like you just don't feel like you've improved that much. But the only way to get better at basketball is to go to basketball practice every day for a month. I promise you, you're going to be better at basketball at the end of that month. As long as you're practicing with the right skills and techniques, right? Like if you're, if you go to back basketball practice every day, but you like got confused and you think it's soccer. And so you're trying to <laughs> kick the ball into the basket, right? Like you could go to that practice every day for a month and you're not any better at basketball. So you got to yeah. like, make sure that you're working on the right skills and you're working on it over a long period of time. Students tend to do better in cars if they work on like, I would rather have a student work for like half an hour every day, like five days a week for a month, than have a student just take one weekend and do it all weekend, like like 10 hours, even though like the time may be roughly equivalent, right? Or, or it may even be more time spent in that burst. You're better off spreading this out. Like you need to, skills take time to develop. And so cars is one of those things that you want to start early. You want to start with the right technique and like thinking about the right way. Don't worry about timing. And you need to work on it consistently and keep yeah. kind of like applying pressure slowly over time to get that to finally crack and break. And then all of a sudden, your car's master after you've been doing this for a couple of months and you've developed skills and you're so good at it that you can whiz through a passage very, very quickly. Um, but it's one of those things that you don't feel any better after one day of working on it. You feel better after a month of working on it. Yeah, you cannot brute force your way through cars. No. You simply cannot. It's the and one section that you absolutely cannot. Yep. As I say that as somebody who loves the sciences, and I want to tell <laughs> students, work on the sciences from the beginning. But like, no, cars <laughs> is the thing you need to start with and keep that constant pressure on. Was it you that during our uh, during our podcast on the ideal timeline, was it you the one that mentioned to, to start cars from the beginning? Yeah, I think so. I like, think it might have been. Because yeah. the, re the reality is you do. You need that time. You need that skill or you need that strategy in order to cultivate it into doing well. And this is something I've, I've definitely said before, and I really do I really do believe this. A weakness is just a strength we haven't cultivated yet. So a lot of people come in with cars as a weakness. You can get strong at cars. Just got to cultivate it the right way. Um, yeah. So you've mentioned free trial sessions. <laughs> I also want to let students know that for a limited time, we're actually, which is something that I'm super personally super excited about for a limited time we're giving students short access like no credit card required to the course like the actual course itself the so complete you can go course. in and just watch lectures and do homework yes. and yeah exactly and so you can see what it's all about but also that means you have access to our instructors during live classes and you can understand how to approach the sciences cars and get an idea of what, what the course is like. And I think that's so much, I think that in conjunction with the free trial session is the kind of thing that no one should be missing out on. Because if you're missing out on those two free things that you're being offered, you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, but I personally enjoy doing the free trial session, so I can't complain. As long as people come, I'm happy. Um, and I will keep doing them and, and keep walking through Cars Passages because I think it's so incredibly important. At the end of the day, I think that's what we were initially known for. And so students sometimes don't realize that we also have the whole science, but now we have the whole MCAT 
for you guys. Um, and the same way, just because I think it's worth repeating this, we have the daily cars passages for free. We also have them for the sciences. And so I know you were talking about the sciences today, but I'm throwing it back to the sciences because I think that here at Jack Weston, like we really do care about you guys as students. And that's always been a core part of our mission of, of helping you succeed on the MCAT. Um, and so go check the course out, meet with an academic advisor. They can get you set up with that and and help you yeah. get access to the course and, and get a better idea of how do you deal with the mammoth that is cars? Yeah. I think that like, no matter what, if you haven't been to a cars free trial session, that would be my first recommendation to any student who's working on cars, get some actual practicable um, experience going through and, and seeing things. And um, we do have all of these other things going on, which I definitely encourage, like get into the free trial for the course, you know, watch some lectures, do some homework, kind of see how this stuff, how this stuff works, but check out those free trial sessions, because I think that is one of the best ways to kind of get going. And if, if nothing else, if you guys have been putting off cars, hopefully we have encouraged you to stop doing that, to start working today, right? Like I've never Never, like m time is the most important factor for improving in cars. It's not like I honestly believe it's not like how like how necessarily even how hard you work. You do have to work hard, but a student who's going to work hard for a week is going to do worse than a student who just kind of like puts in a little bit every day and doesn't actually like, you know, like ever they, they never cancel on events with their friends and family because they just want to put in like 20 minutes. They'll find time somewhere throughout the day like that. You're going to do better in that scenario. So you want to start early. Um, go to a free trial session, give, start to figure out some of those techniques, some of those skills, and, and make your way to test day and actually see that car score increase. 